Alright boys, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about why the Brooklyn Nets should start a Marcus Aldridge. Now, this is a tricky situation to cover because he can't start every game, right? But he should be starting, if that makes any sense. Now, tonight, we go against the Minnesota Timberwolves, against Carl Anthony Towns, who is playing out of his mind right now, and probably his best basketball all year. So would I start LA? Well, first of all, it's his first game. That's not happening. But even if he was healthy, he's been here a week. I, I still, you just can't start him against Carlton Towns. But overall, the next game, Rockets. You take a look at the Hornets, the Bulls, the Knicks, the Pelicans. Like all those games, the Marcus Aldridge should be starting. It's just when you go against Embiid or Cat. And again, I said Embiid, yes. Yeah, so if the Nets go against the Sixers in the playoffs, you can't start Lamarcus Aldridge. And the reason is because of his defense, and he's not very quick at all. However, what Lamarcus Aldridge brings to the table is far superior to Nicholas Claxton and DeAndre Jordan. And that's because he can get his own shot. And also, he in general is just a pretty good shooter. I know he's shooting 33% from three. It's been a really down year for LA, but as soon as he comes to Brooklyn, man, trust me on this. He's going to get back to normal. Just like Blake Griffin. Stopped 17 points last game in 20 minutes. Super efficient. Caught an alley-oop dunk. Dunked in his first game. His only points though, but still, I mean, that's the thing about these guys, man. They show flashes of their old self. Is LaMarcus Aldridge still that seven-time All-Star every night? No, absolutely not. If that were the case, the Spurs would have kept him. I mean, there's something obviously up of why they let him go, and it's his defense. His defensive rating is very bad. It's worse than Claxton. Obviously, Claxton's a good defender, but it's worse than DeAndre Jordan. And again, like, Claxton is a good defender in the sense of on his feet on the perimeter, but down low, he does get bullied. He's not the best rebounder. So, I mean, we've seen Claxton have really good rebounding games, but overall, he's just not that great of a rebounder. And the, and the reason is he, he doesn't have that, that grown man body. I mean, he's 21. He's younger than me. Nicholas Claxton does not have a grown man body. He's not 25 or 26 or 27. So, LA, he has shown flashes to me this season of being that old player, his old self. And you might be thinking like, well, yeah, have you seen him play at all? I mean, it's pretty obvious that he's not the same guy. And yeah, I actually have because... Uh, for fantasy reasons, I have LA. Yeah, it's not been great, but I also have Keldon Johnson, so I try to watch as many games as I can every night, and I've seen LaMarcus Aldridge play, and I've seen nights where he can't miss, and then I've seen nights where he can't buy a bucket, but if you put him with James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and soon to be Kevin Durant, then it's going to help him out, man. He's going to generate open looks. Now, the thing is, is can he protect the rim? He can. He's six foot eleven. He's going to get rebounds. He's going to contest shots. Now he's just not athletic at all. So, but it doesn't matter because again, if you start him against teams that don't have a center that's better than him or athletic, then it doesn't matter. So again, the New York Knicks. Who's their center right now? Well, Mitchell Robinson was. That that would be kind of interesting to see LA go against Mitch, but. Mitch is out for the year probably, or at least he's out for some time because he had that fracture in his leg. I saw that game live, and again, man, I'm praying for Mitch. He's such a good dude. Same age as me, so it's kind of crazy, right? But Chicago Bulls, um, Nikola, Nikola, Nikola Vujovic. That, see, this is going to be a really big test because he can stretch the floor, and he's also a 7-footer, or about 6'11", same size as LA, that back-to-the-basket type of dude. So that, that's going to be a good test. So if LA can defend Vujovic at all or obviously he's not shutting him down to like 15 points if he can hold him to under his average like that would be good for me because I know a lot of people are saying that the Nets need a rim protector they need a center that can catch lobs and coming from a guy that's seen every James Harden game since he not that since he got in the league that's that's a stretch but majority of the game since he's come to the league James Harden does play better with a lob threat but he can still play without one. I mean, look, he just played with P.J. Tucker as a center with the Rockets before coming over to the Nets. I mean, yeah, he had Christian Wood, but the year before that, he was basically like half more than half the year rocking with without Capella. I mean, they had Isaiah Hartenstein, who they should have kept. That was outrageous. But the majority of the time, they were running with P.J. Tucker as center. And look, he, he in the Lakers game uh, uh, series, in the, the second round of the bubble, he averaged 30 points on 50% from the field. So... Yes, he, he definitely does play better with a lob threat, but they still are going to have Claxton and DJ. It's not like they're going to be out of the rotation. I'm just saying that LaMarcus Aldridge, hell, he could play 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. I don't care how many minutes he plays, but he should be starting the game because Harden needs a break, bro. Like, real talk, man. Like, he needs a break. He's been playing way too many minutes. I believe he's second in the NBA in minutes since joining the Nets. Could be first at this point. He's on the ball almost every play. His usage is through the roof. Now, yes, I understand. Kevin Durant has been injured and Kyrie Irving has missed the past three games. He will return tonight. I can't wait to watch that because Kyrie Irving is one of my favorite players. Dude is electric. 
I'd say he's about a top 10 player. He's, when, he, when Kyrie's on, on, bro, like, he's unguardable. He really is. He's, he's, even when he's not on, he sometimes is still unguardable because of his handle and ability to just get to where he wants to be his first step. But yeah, so Harden, he definitely does need a big man that he can just throw the ball down to and get an easy bucket. Now, again, Harden has never had that, really. If you think about it, like even in OKC, he had Kevin Durant, who, again, it can, can post up, but that's not what he's really known for. He's more of just that isolation guy, you know? So, um, again, in Houston, obviously, he never had someone that he could throw the ball down to and go get a bucket. The, the one guy that comes close is Russell Westbrook, who's six foot three or six foot four, maybe six foot five. I don't even know what tall Russ is, but sometimes, like, he looks six five to me. He looks the same size as Harden, but he's listed as six three. So, but yeah, like, Russell Westbrook was the one guy where Harden could throw the ball down to and he could just back up a point guard and go get a bucket. So now you add a six eleven guy that can shoot. I mean, go look at Lamarcus Aldridge's form, bro. It's so crisp and clean i'm really hyped for him man the one concern that i have is again the defense and him being 35 or how he's 36 5 35 i think he's 35 he is the oldest player on the nets roster pretty much so that does concern me but i just feel like he's going to help this team so much now if i'm being honest and i hate to say this because again i have him in fantasy i don't think like like griffin he'll contribute to anything at all in fantasy because it's not not like he's gonna grab 10 rebounds a game there's just they have claxon and dj and he's, I don't know if he's that guy anymore. I mean, he's averaging, what, four rebounds a game? It's just, he's not really having that great of a year. But in certain stretches, he's going to be very important because if Harden's shot isn't on, which some, usually it is, but if sometimes Harden's shot's going to be off, and you'll know early on if James Harden's about to have an off shooting night, which, again, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. So you can just rely on LaMarcus Aldridge to go get a bucket, throw it down to him. He can, hell, he can run the offense and pass out of the post. So a lot of people just don't understand, like, LaMarcus Aldridge still does have a lot in the tank, and even if he's not that seven-time All-Star, he still very well is a good player that the Nets really needed to go out and bring in through the buyout market, because for the buyout to be able to find a 6'11 guy, 260, that can create his own shot, that can shoot out of the post, man, that can hit open three balls at a pretty consistent level. Now, again, 33% of the season is not very consistent, but league average is about 35, 36, so he's almost there, but it's it's LaMarcus bro like he's gonna knock down a ton of shots he's also gonna be taking probably a couple more a game now I'd have to imagine because he's gonna stretch the floor so he'll get some good looks bro he really will because the, the guy that's guarding LaMarcus Aldridge is probably gonna come up to double Harden or Kyrie when they drive and just force LaMarcus Aldridge to beat them so if you guys did enjoy the video feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you are new I'm posting Brooklyn Nets videos every single day now I get that I also do post the Rockets and Lakers to this point I don't know what I'm posting but it's going to be something along the lines of just those three teams. Like maybe here and there I'll cover other NBA teams. But uh, for now, I'm just focused on those three teams. So again, guys, hopefully you have a good rest of your day. This is Swaggy. I'm signing out. Peace.